guys, the Asas de Carlos Tirzate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making one of the most famous Greek appetizers, little spinach pie triangles known as Spanakopitakia. The same spinach pie filling is going to be used that I make for almost all of my spinach pie recipes. It's not cooked, which makes it super easy to put together. It's very fresh tasting and vibrant, and it is so easy to make. And these are going to be crispy and buttery and delicious. They freeze beautifully. So if I were you, I'd definitely go and make a second batch so I could have some in the freezer. They stay fresh in there for months, which is they're great to have on hand for snacking, for appetizers, just for everything. Totally delicious. Let's get started. So I like to do this using my tabletop mixer that's fitted with a paddle attachment. Now in the mixer, I'm going to add all of the feta cheese. You need about 15 to 16 ounces of feta cheese, and I like to buy it in block form. Then I have 15 ounces of ricotta cheese. Then I have four eggs in here. I'm just going to lightly beat them. a little bit of black pepper, a heaping teaspoon of dried dill. If you're using fresh dill, then just chop up about three to four tablespoons of fresh dill, a little bit of salt, and I'm just gonna mix this until the feta is all crumbled up. When my mom first taught me this recipe, let me turn off the mixer, um, she taught me how to basically like break up the spinach with my hands in a big bowl, and if you watch my very first Spanakopita video, that is the method I've used. And just recently I found that the mixer is so helpful in doing that. Your hands don't freeze up because you're using all these cold ingredients and it does all of the work for you. So if you have a mixer, go ahead and use it. Otherwise, go ahead and follow that video and you could just use, you could put on a pair of gloves and just use your clean hands to do that. Okay, so now I have a pound of spinach. These are baby spinach leaves that I've just roughly chopped. And I'm gonna run the mixer on low speed and I'm gonna add the spinach a little bit at a time. It's gonna break down. And you don't have to pre-cook the spinach. That's the beauty of this recipe. Next, I have six scallions that I've thinly sliced all the way down to the light green parts. I'm gonna add them to the mixer as well. And that's it. The spinach filling is ready. Let me not let it fall out of the mixing bowl. Now a good idea is to add the eggs in at the very end so that way you can go in and taste the filling and adjust the seasoning if it needs more salt or pepper. I've already added the egg, so I'm not going to taste it. I don't like to taste anything with raw egg in it, but um, it should be good because feta cheese tends to be really salty. And I also added a little bit of salt for the ricotta cheese. Everything else should be fine. Now it's time to put the little spinach pies together. So go, in, go ahead with a spatula and just mix everything so whatever is stuck to the bottom and sides of the bowl is incorporated and everything is nice and even. Okay, so we're going to need two baking trays that have been lined with parchment paper and we're going to need two one-pound packs of phyllo. The best phyllo to use is the number four, which is the classic traditional phyllo. You're going to get the right amount of sheets per package. We're going to use one pack at a time. Make sure you thaw it out in the refrigerator overnight and then you leave it on the counter for about an hour or two before you work with it so you can, it can come to room temperature. They're usually 12 inches long, so we're going to cut this into thirds. So at every four inches, we're going to cut it while it's in the uh, plastic wrap. Really all you need to do is one and then use it as the measure. Now leave phyllo in the packaging so it doesn't dry out. And then over here I have a pound of melted unsalted butter. Salted butter is actually what I prefer, so if you have that and it's not too salty, use that. It's going to add tons of flavor. You can also use olive oil instead if you prefer that, but butter adds so much more flavor. So I'm going to take one sheet at a time and I'm going to drizzle some butter down the center. Then I'm going to put another sheet on top and drizzle the butter on the, on the, on the top portion, leaving the bottom third without the butter. Then I take a tablespoon of the filling and I put it right there on the bottom. And then I'm going to roll it up flag style. So I'm going to take this corner right here 
and bring it up to make a triangle. And then keep rolling up. This is the way you would fold a flag and you end up with a nice triangle at the end. So if you get a sheet that's connected with two sheets, then go ahead and use them together. Don't worry about buttering in between. That's gonna happen every now and then. Sometimes you'll have three layers, sometimes two. But most of the time, if you get a good pack of phyllo, they'll be separate. I just wanna let you know, because it does happen. And you're, it's gonna start off, this is your first time making triangles, it's gonna start off a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be rolling them up in no time. And as you go, keep putting them on the baking tray. I'm gonna continue forming these little triangles until all of the filling and all of the phyllo is finished. Okay, so we made 49 spinach pies. Each tray holds 24 triangles. So the two trays, there was one extra. And then I did have some filling left over, mainly for, to make about four more. And I just didn't feel like opening up a new pack just to make four more. You could if you want to. If you're doubling up the recipe, then you're gonna need about five packs of phyllo to make the right amount of spanakopita. Now, if you're freezing a tray like I am, I'm not gonna bake both trays because we're not gonna need that many today. Then the tray that you're freezing, wrap it tightly with plastic wrap and do not brush the tops of those spinach pies with butter, the ones that are going in the freezer, because then it's just going to get stuck to the plastic and you're just going to have a mess on your hands. Instead, when you're ready to bake them, go ahead and brush them with butter you know, right before you put them in the oven. You can definitely bake them frozen, so if you want to take a tray out anytime you're having guests over or if you want to serve them to your family, take the tray out of the oven, remove the plastic wrap, brush the tops liberally, liberally with some melted butter. And if the butter is already salted, then you don't have to sprinkle any salt on top. But if you're using unsalted butter like I did today, then go ahead and sprinkle the top with some salt. And then you would cover it with foil loosely, so that way the foil isn't touching the top, and bake it for 45 minutes covered. Then go ahead and remove the foil and bake them until they're golden, which should take about 15 minutes more at about 400 degrees. The tray that I'm baking straight away, I brushed with melted butter, the one that obviously wasn't frozen, and then I sprinkled the top with salt and I baked it uncovered, I'm baking it uncovered, at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna take about 40 minutes. You can rotate it halfway through baking so that way it turns golden brown evenly all around. And I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. This tray is gonna go in my freezer and it's gonna be ready for me whenever I need it. So the spanakopitakia, the little mini spinach pie triangles, took 40 minutes to cook in my oven. Every oven bakes differently. So keep an eye on them, keep an eye on them. And when they're beautifully golden on top, that's how you know they're ready. Take them out. Before you serve them, let them sit for about 15 minutes so that way they can settle down and cool down and be easier to handle. Serve these with some tzatziki sauce and you will be good to go. And now the best part is the taste test and I'm right about to do that. Time to take a bite. Mmm. Crisp, buttery, yet the inside, the filling is so moist and flavorful and fresh tasting. Because we haven't cooked the spinach, it just had so much more moisture and flavor. Yet, as you can see, the tray is nice and dry. It has not leaked out any moisture from the spinach not being cooked. You can totally skip that step from now on. I like to serve mine with some tzatziki sauce, so I am gonna scoop a little bit right into the center, and I'm gonna finish this panakopitaki. You guys head on over to the website, print this recipe out on demetriusdishes.com. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and post your recipe requests down there. I read them all, and I add them to my list, and I get to them one by one. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.